Hello, Internet. My name is Ayla Tesla Mabe, and today I'd like to share with you some of my all time favorite guitar tones from a few of my favorite songs. And these tones really helped shape my understanding and appreciation of sound design and all that you can do with this incredible instrument. So, even if you don't think this is an area of guitar playing that you understand, I'm hoping that by showing you my process in finding tones, you might learn a little bit about how this whole thing works. Not that I'm a master on the subject, I'm just really passionate about it. So I'm gonna be running through a digital amp and effects simulator to really try to get as close to the original tones as I can without going broke. So let's go. The first on my list is Junior Marvin's guitar tone in the song Turn Your Lights Down Low by Bob Marley and the Wailers. It's so delicate and warm and just completely gorgeous. It's perfect for this song. Many people have noted that Junior Marvin's tone was a sound halfway between Curtis Mayfield and Hendrix. And I think some of the choices made to achieve this guitar sound really highlight that perfectly. So firstly, I'm playing a Strat on the neck pickup to get a buttery, fuller, darker, but slightly twangy tone. Next, I'm running into a Fender Twin Reverb in the vibrato channel with a 63 spring reverb, just for that luscious, warm, classic Fender spring tone. So, this is what we have now. Already sounds really nice, but there's more to it. So as a fan of watery and lovely guitar tones, I was always really drawn to the modulated, slightly phased out character of the guitar in this song. For that reason, I'm running through an electroharmonic small stone phaser. Here we go. This is the best part. Now, the last essential special sauce element to add to this tone that I honestly never really noticed until doing research for this video is running this whole signal through a wah pedal. So I'm running through a Dunlop Crybaby Phasal Model 310 pressed about a third of the way down. And the wah pedal adds such a unique reggae character to the tone, and it is exactly what I needed to add to emulate Junior Marvin's beautiful sound, this beautiful song. Now it sounds like this. The second tone I'd like to share is the one from 20th Century Boy by T-Rex. And when I first heard this song when I was 14 years old, this was one of the most powerful, heavy guitar tones I had ever heard. And it seemed so creative and unlike any other rock guitar tone I had ever heard. And instantly, I was in love. Mark Bolin was such an innovator. He was a producer, fantastic guitar player and songwriter, poet, an all-around rock icon, and he's cited as one of the pioneers of the glam rock movement of the 70s. So when I think glam rock, I definitely think Gibson Les Paul. So it makes a lot of sense that we start our signal chain here. So let's hear what this sounds like on its own. Nice! Obviously that's not even remotely close to the tone we're going for but this is a good start. So when I think glam rock, I also think extravagant Marshall stack. So naturally, I am running through a Marshall Plexi Tremolo 50, and I'm running it through the normal channel. Let's engage that. So I'm also running through a 63 spring reverb to add a nice something something to the tone. Here we go. So 
So Mark Bolin was cited as using a Vox tone bender often. So for my fuzz, I am running through a fuzz that essentially is supposed to be emulating a Vox tone bender, like this. So this sounds great, but it isn't quite huge enough. So this is where things get crazy, and I'm lucky that I have something like this Helix here to help me pull this off. Um, I'm actually gonna be running my guitar signal into a second channel for an overdubbed multi-track effect, because when I listen to the original song, it definitely sounds to me like there's a whole pile of guitar tracks there, as opposed to just one. So to isolate what I'm doing with that second channel for a second, it's very similar to the first guitar channel we just discussed, but this time the amp EQ settings and fuzz settings are slightly different to help fill out the harmonic spectrum a bit more and make it feel like perhaps there is a second guitarist playing. So I'm running all of this through an analog tape machine emulator for that lovely tape machine vibrancy and warmth. The most fun part of this tone is running all of this through a vintage digital delay with the mix turned up to 100 at the start of the signal. So this will delay the whole signal slightly behind our first one, which again makes it feel like there's a totally different guitar track going on here, uh, as opposed to just one person playing. And it makes the tone that much more huge, and so I love it. So let me turn off that delay for a second and just play with both channels engaged. So already much larger sound, but let's turn the delay on. Adds a very cool character to it, I think. Um, and something else that I did, which uh, you know you can't always do when you're using analog equipment and actual physical guitar pedals, but in this case, I panned both of the guitar parts slightly apart from one another, with the first channel more to the left and our second channel more to the right. Again, just making things sound more huge. So there we go, there's the tone. So our third delicious guitar tone is that from Just Kiss My Baby by The Meters. So anyone who knows me knows that I absolutely love funk, and this track was without a doubt Young Ayla's introduction to the incredible world of groove-based music. Before using the Starcaster that Leo Nocentelli was famous for using, he actually used a 1976 Strat and a 72 Tele Custom in the early days of the meters. And you know, the boxiness of the tone in this song makes me think that it was played on a Telecaster. So I'm using the closest guitar that I own to a Tele, which is the Fender Meteora, which is a really freaky hybrid Frankenstein guitar that essentially has the characteristics of a telly down at this end of the instrument, where the pickups are. So in either case, I sadly don't own a Starcaster yet. So I'll just make do with this telly sort of sound for now. Here is the sound of the guitar. All right, nice, but obviously we're missing a lot. So that's, the next, what, huh, what? So next, Leo Nocentelli was often seen using Fender tube amps, especially in the earlier days of the meters. So I'm running into a Fender twin reverb in the vibrato channel. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and now for some old school recording magic, I'm running into an analog tape machine emulator. Here we go. It's super subtle, but it just adds a little extra warmth and there's a little bit of a tape machine warble on the tone now. It's kind of cool. So now the next part of this tone 
was very interesting. There was some debate about whether Leonor Sintelli was running through a manual WA pedal or some sort of Ottawa envelope filter like the Mutron 3, which he was known to use quite often. Now listening to the character of the tone, it kind of sounds to me like it has the quality of both a manual WA and an Ottawa. wah. So for that reason, I'm actually running through both. So I have a Dunlop Crybaby Super at the front of the signal chain for my manual wah, which I will control with my foot. And then I'm running into a voice box filter on the Helix that was ultimately inspired by the Mutron 3. So it's like the best of both worlds, baby. Okay, let's enable them. First, let's turn on the auto wah, just like this. And now with the actual wah pedal engaged too. Kind of funky. Lastly, while this guitar tone has the typical simplicity and directness commonly found in funk guitar sounds, there is a certain airy, spacious quality too. And so I'm running a duplicate signal into a chamber reverb that's panned slightly off to the left, which I think brings me a little bit closer to sounding like the original track. Nice, okay, here's what it sounds like now. So no video on guitar tones by me would be complete without including one of my favorite artists, Jimi Hendrix. So let's take a look at the guitar tone of the Hendrix classic Voodoo Child, not to be confused with Voodoo Child's Slight Return, which is obviously the much more famous track, but Voodoo Child is the 15 minute jam off of the record Electric Ladyland between Jimmy, Steve Winwood, Jack Cassidy, and Mitch Mitchell. And I've always thought that the guitar tone in this song, from the very first note that Jimmy plays in the intro, is probably one of the most delicious sounds to ever hit my ears. So to me, it is one of the most beautiful guitar tones I've ever heard. No pressure to myself. A little bit of pressure though. Let's see if I can emulate it. Firstly, while a Strat seems like the obvious choice, given it's a Jimi Hendrix track, I am gonna be coil tapping the neck pickup to reduce the output and have the pickup sound more like what you'd find in a 60s era Strat. Because of course, Jimi Hendrix was a 60s era musician. It makes sense. So while Hendrix was known for playing through massive 100 watt Marshall Super Lead Plexis, it seems that he actually played Voodoo Child through a Fender Bass Man. And it certainly sounds like it to me. Let's take a look at everything we've discussed so far. All right, this is... Sound of the Strat. Now I'm gonna coil tap. Very subtle difference, but when I start adding all the other layers of the tone, it actually affects things very significantly. And maybe I'll show you again at the end, once everything is engaged, just how much of a difference it makes when you coil tap. Um, and another very important point, I did tune my low E string down to D because you know the tuning of the strings actually has a very significant effect on the tone and the character of the sound. And that is a big part of why this song sounds the way it does. So let's engage that amp. Sounds pretty cool. And the next thing I did was put an exotic EP booster at the start of the signal chain to help drive and break up the amp even more. And the next thing I'm doing is pretty much dousing the entire thing in spring reverb. I, of course, have that signal running into an analog tape machine emulator too, but... 
the moment I add spring reverb, it just adds this whole other liveliness to the tone. And adding that tape emulator, obviously it did make it a little bit louder in this case, but in general it just adds this certain warmth uh, and vibrancy to the tone that I think only a tape machine could really add. Now what always drew me to and made me fall in love with this guitar tone is how it almost sounds like it was recorded in an empty stadium or a cave or something like that. So what I've done is created a second signal for my guitar which is pretty much identical to this first one we just listened to. Only this time I've delayed the second signal by 82 milliseconds, so it feels like you're hearing the sound bounce off of the walls of a huge space. What I'm doing is running the delay with the mix at 100%, so the whole signal is delayed. Right, and I mentioned I would talk about the coil tap. Let me uncoil tap for a second. Let's listen to the tone. Sounds awesome, obviously, but there's a little extra special something added. A certain authenticity. When I coil tap, so obviously an essential part of the tone. For the fifth and final guitar tone, here is Crimson and Clover by Tommy James and the Chandelles. Tommy James was a little bit of a music tour de force who played most of the instruments on this track, and the guitar tone is so pretty and delicate, and it is 100% one of my favorite guitar tones of all time. This guitar sound totally ignited a love of tremolo in me, and anyone who knows me knows that I really love tremolo, so that is saying a lot. So while this song was apparently recorded on a jazz master, there's a certain warm twang to the tone that I felt my Strat really captured nicely. So I'm on the neck pickup, coil tapped of course for that vintage pickup sound. Let's hear what that sounds like. So what next? Tommy James apparently played through an Ampeg Gemini 2. Now I don't have an amp quite like that at my disposal, so I'm running through an Ampeg SVT in the Bright Channel. And yes, that is a bass amp, but honestly, there is a certain richness and fullness to this guitar tone that I think this amp really captures nicely. And I'm also running through the Bright Channel to help fight the muddiness that could potentially come from playing a guitar through a bass amp. But overall, I think it works pretty well. Now, of course, I got a nice 63 spring reverb going on too. Let's enable that now. And now I'm running through an analog tape machine emulator. I think I've already explained many times in this video why I love the sound of that. And I think that's a great thing to use for a 60s era recording in my attempt to emulate it. So this is what we have so far. Now, the most magical part of this tone, of course, comes from the tremolo. So I'm just running through a pretty generic, nondescript tremolo here, but it's worth mentioning that Tommy James himself said that they recorded the tremolo to be in sync with the drums in this song. So I set the tremolo to modulate in time with the tempo of the song, which sits at about 168 BPM. Now, this does bring us quite close, but there's a little extra something going on in the tone here. And apparently engineer Bruce Staples said that he ran everything through tape delay without telling Tommy. So he apparently took the signal coming from the machine they were recording on and returned it to the mixer, running it through the rec... What? 
He apparently took the signal coming from the machine they were recording on and returned it to the mixer, running it through the record head again with some delay. So like I've done with some of the other tones in this video, I'm taking an identical signal to the first one, but delaying it slightly with a transistor tape delay set at 123 milliseconds. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now the last thing I want to say, and this hasn't been verified anywhere, and maybe I'll listen to the track again tomorrow and completely disagree with this assessment, but there's a part of me that feels like some of the strumming in this song was actually done with the nail as opposed to with a pick. So it could be worth trying that. And obviously picking with your nail versus picking with a pick has a pretty significant effect on the tone too. And it's cool to observe how many tools you have at your disposal, even if you're not even running through any effects or amps or anything like that, just based on how you touch the strings. That's a huge part of tone too. And that's obviously worth developing because that's all part of your own personal touch on the instrument. So there you go, a few of my all time favorite guitar tones. It's amazing to be able to learn how to play like your musical heroes, but there's something so amazing about being able to sound that much more like them by figuring out how your favorite guitar tones were created. It's a whole other skill in itself that could take years to develop, but for me as a songwriter, producer, and all around fanatical fan of guitar, learning my way around sound design has completely enriched my experience with the guitar. It can also be a huge part of developing your own unique voice on the instrument, and so with all of that said, please leave a comment down below and let me know what your favorite guitar tone of all time is. And with that, bye. I'll see you soon.